Hello and welcome to Moonshot Nutrition. My name is Addison and today I'm going to kick off a series on weight loss. Specifically, I'm going to explore weight loss in at least a four-part mini-series, possibly more. And I'm going to use so many videos to do this. Not because I think you need to, that many videos to lose weight. You don't. But instead, I'm trying to dispel the ridiculous number of myths out there surrounding weight loss surrounding what ideal weight is, surrounding the marketing, all the nonsense that has clouded up what should have been a relatively simple, although not necessarily easy, task of losing weight, specifically body fat, because let's face it, when people talk about weight loss, yeah, it's fat loss. It's always fat loss. I've yet to meet anybody that complains about how big their biceps are. I just haven't met this person yet. So... With res let's start today with whatever an ideal weight is. And I, and I say that with some level of credulity because ideal weight has never really made sense because we're talking about something that is inherently subjective. Okay, so the idea that, that nutrition and science has somehow put a good definition on that which is by definition subjective is a little strange to me. So instead, I'll start with the general uh, body fat percentages that certainly a lot of, if not most gurus will tell you is the ideal body weight. So for men, that's between 10 and 18% body fat. And for women, that's going to be between 14 and about 26% body fat. As you can see, that's a really big margin. And people will argue that it can be lower or higher for both genders. And none of them are inherently wrong. They really aren't. Okay, because remember, part of what an optimal body fat percentage or an optimal body weight is, is what works for you. What gives you your best version of yourself, which usually will maximize your health. But hey, if you're an NFL football lineman, then maybe just purely health is not all you're going for. So again, the idea is to give you a little bit of leeway here so that you can find what really is optimal for you. So instead, I'm going to actually define the optimal body uh, weight with five things. Item number one is subjective well-being within your skin. This doesn't mean you look good in a swimsuit, although maybe you do. And this doesn't mean other people think you look good in your swimsuit. And maybe they do. Instead, this is about, do you feel good existing in your own body? Do you feel good when you move? Do you have a sense that you are somehow in good health within your own skin? Okay, and I know that seems really hippy-dippy, but trust me, subjective well-being rarely comes to people that are over and underweight. And maybe not rarely, but it doesn't come near as often. Items number two and three, and they kind of go together, is strength and endurance. If you have plenty of strength to do the things that you want to do, as well as the endurance to do them, play in the park with your kids, easily walk up and down stairs, get in and out of chairs without struggling. If you have the strength and endurance to live the life the way that you want to, there's a decent chance, a better than decent chance, that your weight's in a fairly optimal range. And obviously you can change it a little bit if you want to change the strength and endurance. Okay, so use those two to try to figure out how am I feeling. Lastly, and now we're going to get to the mental side of things, we're looking at emotional well-being and cognitive clarity. Okay, emotional well-being is, it's amazing how when people are very under or overweight, they rarely have the world's best emotional perspective. Okay, and even if you're really good at hiding from other people, you need to find a way to get in touch with it yourself and ask yourself, why am I unhappy? And it, I promise you, it's not always due to your weight. Don't get me wrong. There are many other factors. But I have met very few people that are in a very bad weight that are oddly happy. It usually just doesn't happen. Uh, and of course, mental clarity, they are even calling uh, 
Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes because of how often type 2 diabetes follows Alzheimer's and type 2 diabetics tend to be on the very heavy side. So again, your um, weight will affect your mental clarity hugely. If you're too light or too heavy, I promise you, your brain will rarely function at optimal levels. Now, all of that being said, you need to take it into context, those five things I just gave you, which means that, yes, you will find somebody that is over or underweight from what is probably their most optimal weight that does well on one, two, even three of those five things. You will find hardly anybody that does well five for five when they're clearly over or underweight. I'm not going to claim these genetic freaks aren't out there, but I am going to tell you that if you're betting on you being one of those people, well, let's just say I'm glad you're the one betting and not me because it almost never works out that way. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the first part of this mini series. Um, please hit the like, please hit the subscribe. Most importantly, if you learned something interesting here today, something useful, spread it to those you care about. Make the world a better place. My name's Addison from Moonshot Nutrition. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.